We have now understood that gene expression control is not just at the DNA level. It's also at the protein level. And we were talking about nascent polypeptide enzymes and how they're really functional. And that's because we talked about some factors over here in terms of uh, the structure and also some modifications like covalent bonds happening once these polypeptides are formed. But we haven't discussed a particular, a particular example. And, and by understanding the example of the in, uh, insulin, we're going to understand how these nascent polypeptides are cleaved and, and how they are converted to mature uh, en enzymes. So without further ado, let's talk about it real fast. So often nascent enzymes have to be cleaved to become functional. They're, these are called protein precursors. And that's because there are a couple of reasons why we can have protein precursors. And, and these are called zymogens or or you can also call them pre proenzymes. So why can't eukaryote, eukaryotes synthesize polypeptides that are ready for use? Isn't that a more effective way? So you might be thinking that hey, look, prokaryotes can just simply transcribe, translate, have their protein ready on spot. How efficient is that? Why can't eukaryotes do the same thing? Question mark. Two good reasons. Number one. Protein precursors, or zymogens, are often used when the mature version of the protein is harmful to other regions. And the, the cell doesn't want it to have unwanted interactions, which, which can be dangerous. Because of that, the, 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 the zymogen is essentially, it has other amino acid sequences on the, the entire polypeptide that have to be cleaved off. It could be cleaved off in the start, in the middle, or towards the end, but there's some kind of cleavage involved in, 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 in the process of making it active. The second reason why it's useful is because it's efficient. It might be inefficient in the short run, but in the long run, they're very efficient because if you think about it, these, uh, they, can be, they can be made available whenever you ask for it. So all you have to do is just modify it. So you could, you could have a bunch of, of insulin or let's not call it insulin right now. Let's, let's, let's get into the example of insulin. So before insulin is made, it's called a pre-pro-insulin. This right here is the primary transcript of what essentially becomes the insulin. Now, going back to this example, if we had the pre pro uh, prepper insulin, right? If we had that and that's made, we can just simply, uh, the body can, the cells can simply start to cleave it and make it a active insulin molecule, a mature insulin molecule that can then function on a very short notice. So it's very efficient in the short run. It can produce very fast. Now here's the entire process of, of the post-translational processing of insulin. Before we discuss this, this is a overall, uh, you might not, under, if you haven't watched the entire, if you have no knowledge of, of how, uh, of the secretory pathway, you might be a little confused, but that's totally fine. Because once you go on and understand uh, the secretory pathway and, and more things about, the, and more information, you, this is going to make a lot more sense. So I try to keep it very simple at the moment. So we have the INS gene. Which will then, which which is responsible for the primary transcript of the of the pre pro insulin, pre pro insulin, and that's a hundred ten a hundred and ten amino acid uh, polypeptide right over here. So once this is made, we notice we have something called a signal peptide bond. Now we have ribosomes inside the cytoplasm, and we also have ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. But we this this right over here is just a signal for this poly or this uh this uh this polypeptide to kind of go towards the or the rough endoplasmic reticulum where it will be further processed and we know that the rough endoplasmic reticulum is involved in the modification of, of proteins and that's exactly what's happening here so this this pre -pro insulin is now transported inside now it's inside the the rough endoplasmic reticulum and it's going to form it's going to call it's going to form pro-insulin when the signal peptide is cleaved off of it. And as this happens, we have other disulfide bonds that are formed as well. And remember, this is the structural change. And we talked about this before, and we said that, you know, like the removal of something, of, of certain elements can cause a, a different chemistry. And because of this, we have disulfide bonds being made inside 
the proinsulin complex. So now this will be transported to a Golgi apparatus, apparatus, and this then will be just you know cleaved by pro protein convertase. And once that once that happens, we have a further modification by the carboxyl peptidase. The car carboxyl peptidase will eventually remove the C terminus. This is the C terminus right here. It's going to remove it, and it's going to make them functional. This is a very very overall uh, view of the of the pro insulin just being converted. But the real what you what what you should be taking away from this is understanding the fact that hey look we have. We have a crap ton of, of uh, mod post translational modifications that need to happen before proteins can become functional.